this baby she's from a random man in atlanta um she's wearing a i was in a time where i wanted to change my life i was in the street selling drugs you know that's the type of shit morgan like i think ironically she's thankful for this guy in this new world where our attention spans are short we're all easily bored we're all easily distracted most of us are traumatized it's very easy for a young naive girl who lacks guidance to gravitate towards quote unquote toxic men and funny enough when they were going back and forth on tiktok one of the things that he brought up is that she's spoiled and she needs a lot of attention and unfortunately social media rewards people with that attention for being shameless now we're seeing these multiple videos of her explaining how she found out that she was baby mama number seven by quote unquote some random man from atlanta that she was with for two years shamelessly not realizing that it speaks more to her being an idiot than any character flaw that he might have. And what annoys me is this idea that men are such good liars, men are so manipulative and conniving, and we're all narcissists and borderline sociopaths who could get away with murder if we wanted to. And the reality is that's not true. Most men are not that good at lying which is why it's important to judge men by their actions and their patterns instead of their words. Because women fall in love with words because they want to believe the fairy tale. So in this case, I don't think she was that naive or he was that good at hiding, well, 12 people basically, because not just the six kids, but also the six baby mothers. Um, I think it's the fact that she was naive, gullible, and maybe complicit, but is now seeking sympathy from social media for her bad decision making. I'm remembering the days when I used to leave the house wearing a half ass top and a pair of booty shorts. Literally, look at me. I have to carry this bag, this purse, this fucking diaper bag, this fucking blanket, this baby. And I know a lot of people are gonna call it victim blaming and they want us to focus on this man, but the reality is this is one irresponsible man and seven irresponsible women. He even mentioned it. He was a street guy. He was a drug dealer, and she liked it. So she was welcoming of, enthusiastic about other aspects of his toxicity before, quote unquote, finding out that she wasn't special. Because I think that's what it boils down to. It's official. I'm famous. <laughs> I'm having a full circle moment right now, okay? Because the person who got me? Mama Ty carried. When I tell you she carried, I have to whisper because my child's gonna troll me if she wakes up. But she carried me through my little depression. Okay, like I used to sit there eating with her because I was, I was, I was out here trying to find where the Brandon man was while I was knocked up in Georgia. Like I ain't got no friends, I ain't got no family, I don't have no money because he sucked me dry. I think the other thing too is part of the consequence of social media. It's turned us all into performers. It's turned us all into entertainers. And the more dramatic and the more film worthy your life is, the better it is, right? Because it's not about how much fun you're having, it's about how much fun you can, you can convince other people that you're having. Which is why we saw her take this story to social media. And I, I actually think that some women prefer lives that are a bit more dramatic just because they're more fun. They're more colorful, they're more textured, they're more entertaining in a, in a weird way. And, you know, we ask the question, why do nice guys finish last? But part of the reason is because nice guys tend to be one dimensional. Nice guys tend to be predictable. And uh, women don't like one dimensional, women don't like predictable. And so much so that they might actually prefer the extreme, unpredictable, unreliable, reactive instead of stable. And I think part of it, to be fair, is character flaw in the individual. I think part of it has to do with trauma, inherited trauma, or the traumas that she experienced in, in her youth. But I think the other part is just female nature. You know, like I've said before, I think female nature is inherently chaotic in a way that 
male nature is meant to balance, just like male nature is inherently uh, stoic in a way that female nature is meant to balance. Uh, but now that we're so out of balance, the chaos that is inherent in female nature is allowed to run wild. And we see it in multiple ways, multiple current events. I remember thinking after Kiki Palmer went through this transformation because of her having a kid, you know, now she, she's got a body that she's never had before. I remember thinking that this is bad because now 14, 15, 16 year old girls are gonna think that pregnancy is the free BBL alternative. And particularly girls who lack that guidance, who lack that foresight, who lack that structure. And especially now in a world where I can do it all by myself, I don't need no man. We're gonna see a lot more of these stories of women playing mom and dad just because I wanted the benefits <laughs> or potential benefits that I might get to my body. I want the credit of being a strong black woman and doing this by myself. And I want the accessory that is this, this cute baby. And the reality that a lot of us don't mention is that to an uncomfortable number of women, their kids are just an accessory and their kids are just validation. And the fact that she's comfortable calling this child a kid from some random man in Atlanta, what, what are the effects gonna be of this little baby growing up hearing that she is the product of some random man in Atlanta? And people are key keying and thinking this is funny, but this is, this is deep. What kind of individual is she gonna grow up to be? What kind of outlook is she gonna have on men? And is that outlook gonna be based on her own experience or her mom's shitty decision-making and her mom's lack of accountability? You know, like I've said often, a lot of us growing up hear that our dads were dead beats, our dads were the scum of the earth. But it's not until we get older that we realize that as much as he might've been a dead beat, as much as he was the scum of the earth, you chose him, mom. What does that say about you? Best case scenario, you were an idiot. Worst case scenario, you were a narcissist yourself and you thought that the magic in your vagina and in your vibes could transform him. And when you inevitably learn that that's not the case and you were faced with the reality of having to rear and raise a full functioning, functional human being by yourself, you grew resentful because you thought this shit was sweet. You thought life was a joke. And obviously you don't get accountability from society. Society only celebrates you for doing the best that you can do in a bad situation that you created for yourself. Hey y'all, so before y'all have sex tonight, just remember one thing, it's too motherfucking hot outside to carry a kid everywhere. I'm about to cry, okay? Um, my, my coochie is sweating. Um, I don't know if milk is leaking from these titties or if it's boob sweat that I feel on me, but I'm hot. Um, she can't walk nowhere. She don't even have on shoes if she wanted to. Um, it's too hot, I got on this fucking, I couldn't even zip the damn bag. I got on these three bags. I got this random man's kid from Atlanta just attached to my hip all summertime. I think this video is such a perfect example of the irony of this situation. She's complaining about it being hot outside while wearing all black. Black attracts heat. And despite the fact that it, it might have been actually hot, there were better things that she could have worn than black. But again, it's about complaining. And sometimes it's about manufacturing a reason to complain because it adds color to your life. It turns your life from a boring and mundane existence to a colorful and dramatic theatrical production. And unfortunately, that's what's the new ideal. And it's clear that this is all a joke to her. She's famous now. She's getting more attention, more views, more likes, more shares, more DMs than she's ever gotten in her life. And what example does that set for the young girls who are watching? oh, this is what I need to do. In a world where fame and infamy are the same exact thing, this is what I need to do. And the fact that we as men have dropped the ball so much and we're allowing women to raise these unproductive, parasitic men is something we have to talk about. As you can see, she's using this baby as an accessory. She's got this baby, quote unquote, helping her make t-shirts. Anybody who's used the heat press knows that it's hot. And to have an infant that close to it, while not even supervising her hands, shows 
this young lady's level of irresponsibility. And as a father, it's, it's infuriating to watch this. But this is what we've become as a society. We reward car crashes. We, re- we reward only fans models, spectacles. Because the reality is just like she's bored, we're bored too. Which is why we're tuned into <laughs> the random man in Atlanta movie. And she's the star. <laughs> This baby is her co-star. Actually, the dude is her co-star. The baby is an extra. <laughs> for her entertainment and for ours, basically. That's the new paradigm. I am so sad because why is the random man in Atlanta making videos? You're the random man in Atlanta. We're not supposed to know what you look like, bro. Like, just take the L and keep it pushing. You stressing my good sis Morgan out, and now you out here like lying. Like, bro, you, now you should have stayed the random man in Atlanta because now all her followers are gonna see you and wanna square up, bro. Like, are you dumb? This this story has become nationwide. Like, I'm out here in Boston <laughs> following this. And what's what's ironic? Like, any any man who really has been outside and really understands the counterintuitive psychology of an uncomfortable number of women, he'll actually probably get more women from this newfound infamy. Women are wondering, what is it about him that allowed him to not just get in proximity to these many women, relatively attractive seeming women, but also make them so smitten that they were willing to risk their lives to clone him? What is it about him? Because guess what? That's how it works in nature. Males of the species who mate first or who've already mated are the most likely to mate again. Those are the ones the females of the species gravitate towards because he's proven. So in a perverse way, he's going to get more women from this, not less. Logically, you would assume that this would be off-putting for a lot of women. No, it makes them curious. So this idea that men are supposed to hold men accountable, I've always said it's bullshit. The only thing that could hold men accountable is consequences. And as a society, as we continue to reward men's bad behavior with female attention, with vagina, with the ultimate reward, which is legacy, there's no incentive for men to change. And it's sad because when you look into all the potential complications of pregnancy, from the fact that your abdominal muscles literally separate and now you're prone to hernias that could potentially kill you. And that's not even bringing up postpartum depression or postpartum psychosis. That's not even bringing up the blood pressure issues that you might run into. That's not even bringing up a whole host of complications that could happen to clone a man. People are just doing it willy nilly for anybody because either I want a baby, I want validation, or I want an interesting life or an interesting story. Coming to bed, honey? Coming to bed, honey? I think I'm afraid of commitment. You afraid of commitment? Yeah, I think so. I think we all are. Yeah? Yeah, some kind of way we are. I'm, try- I'm starting to sabotage my relationship right now. You are? Yeah. <laughs> How so? You know, just fuck it up, you know, because you're scared. <laughs> One of the consequences of trauma is that it resets your sense of normalcy. If you grow up in turmoil, turmoil becomes your norm. If you grow up in noise, it becomes very, very difficult to sleep in, in silence. If you grow up sleeping on the floor, sometimes it makes beds uncomfortable. It's counterintuitive as hell, but human nature is weird. We're walking, talking contradictions. Sometimes we don't want better, we just want familiar. And I think part of the reason why we see some women gravitate towards projects, gravitate towards men that they know ain't no good, part of it is those men are typically easier to control because they lack intelligence. Sometimes it's because you know he needs you versus a man that might actually not need you and have to deal with the anxiety of being unnecessary. Or simply, 
you don't think you deserve any better. So I'm going to go ahead and keep sleeping on the floor because this is what I deserve. I'm going to go ahead and keep ro- rolling with pigs because this is what I deserve. I don't see myself as any better than that. And it's tragic because it creates a vicious cycle because you create kids who inevitably are going to take on that persona. Because they're coming from a mother who didn't believe that she deserved better. And a father who definitely didn't believe he deserved any better because he couldn't become any better. So what do you expect of your kids? And now we see a proliferation of people with low self-esteem who mask it as pseudo-confidence because they had terrible fathers and mothers. And just because their mother stayed when their father left doesn't make her good. Psychology is weird. Sometimes we don't want what we think we want. Sometimes even when the answer is so obvious, it's not necessarily the easier thing to do. Unfortunately, what is good for us isn't always what tastes good. And what tastes good typically isn't what's good for us. But so I don't go down a, a rabbit hole of theodicy and asking why God made us this way. <laughs> I'll just say that we have an opportunity to be honest with ourselves. We have an opportunity to create a better future for our children and our children's children by making better decisions today. We have an opportunity to stop prioritizing entertainment and stop prioritizing highs and lows and start thinking long-term Start thinking about peace and tranquility. And unfortunately, it's not been the norm for us. But the only way we can break the cycle is to stop rewarding that in other people. Stop spending so much of our time consuming it, which coincidentally rewards it. And consider some of the ways that we, in an effort to make our lives more theatrical, welcome and entertain bullshit that we know is bullshit. And later we want people to feel bad for us for the bullshit decisions we made and the bullshit consequences that resulted from them. Life is not a joke. In China, the TikToks that are being shared are science and technology and advancements. In America, the TikToks that are being shared is some idiot 23-year-old girl who, because she's having a good time, got with and was subsequently impregnated by a 28-year-old guy who already had seven children by six or seven other women, and I'm supposed to feel sorry for her. I don't. So to start off, I came home from the gym and took this everything shower. It was literally amazing. I needed that. Did some skincare so my baby daddy doesn't call me pimple face anymore. Body is slaying. White fluzzy slippers. The girls who get it, get it. Finally stopped ignoring my kid, and I took her out of her little swing. Threw up her in the air. She was so mad at that. Put her back in the crib so that I can ignore her again. Um, I got her stuff ready for her little bath. She can thank me later. Okay, don't let this bath cuteness deceive you. Take your birth control. Put the Aveeno in her hair. It's giving 20-inch wig. Slay!